Now I'm going to briefly go through uh, the features of GP SIM, which is currently on the Raspberry Pi. It's going to fall short of the features of probably the latest code for GP SIM because the Raspberry Pi code is going to be uh, a while, uh, a little bit old. Um, but if I look in my build uh, code for this project, uh, first of all, use GPISM to assemble some assembly language. Uh, then GP link to uh, link uh, the object code together. Uh, and then GP sim you can use on the file which comes out of the linking process uh, to actually start a simulation on the assembly language. Uh, so if I start that off, and I close, what I'll do is I'll close the windows I usually have open and I'll open them one by one and go through how the code works or how the debugging process works. Uh, so if you open up the source window, uh, you get a list of the source code for your project. Uh, and you have these little diamonds next to the lines of code in these are breakpoints. And so you can place breakpoints wherever you want them. So up on the top toolbar, there's this step feature and you can step over one line of code each time. Now I'm on the go to init uh, line. So it will go to the label in it. I click on step uh, and there I'm at the start of the init code. Um, but if I scroll down a bit, I'm going to put a breakpoint down at the bottom of the init code here on this line, move LW. Uh, and if I click on run, uh, that will run up to the breakpoint and stop. And now you can put as many uh, breakpoints as you want uh, in the code uh, at any time. And you can see that the carrot is next to the um, is next to the line where I've just run up to. Uh, I'll leave that breakpoint in there. Uh, but now if I click on step and I go on to the next line, so the next line is a call function. So if I click step, it actually steps into the call function. And so now I'm in there and I'm on another line to a call function. But if rather than stepping into the into that new call function, I want to step over that. Just click on step over and it steps over it. Uh, and then you can just keep st stepping through. But if you've decided that you've had enough of that function, actually you want to step back out to the to where it was called from. Click on finish. And it then steps back out and so there's where the line where it's called into and the carrot is now on the next line uh, and then you can the next uh, button along uh, if you click on run it will just keep running until it hits a break point or until you hit the stop button so i'll hit the stop button and it's ended up on this line here and then you can just keep stepping from there if you want to uh, and the last button along the toolbar is uh, reset so you can just reset the microcontroller simulation and you go back up to line zero again, uh, like it's going to be starting again from scratch. So I'll start going for some of the windows that are available. So RAM gives you a list of all the, the RAM addresses in the microcontroller. So if I click in here, I can actually set those uh, value within there. So when you're in your code at any time, it will show you all the, the current RAM values that are in the code. Uh, and then at any time you can change one manually. So if you want to uh, debug experimenting with what would happen if certain values occurred at certain times um, but you can do that uh, and then there's another next windows for EEPROM so it's exactly the same but in your EEPROM so in my program I've set some values for the EEPROM there but you can change any value at any time uh, just to debug what happens if uh, these values occur in my code when, when, when I'm running through my code um, and then the next one I'll go window I'll explain is stack. So if I hit on run, I'll, I'll hit my breakpoint again that I put in originally. Uh, so if I now step and I step into this call function, you'll see on the stack, it puts a return address there. Uh, and then if I step in into this second call function, it then puts the second address, uh, return address there on the stack. So if I click on finish to come out of this call function, it takes that off the stack and then finish again and it will go back up to, there's nothing on the stack. And it's handy to see that if, if you're running out of stack, so there's only like about eight positions on the stack on a cheap mic, on the, one of the basic microcontrollers. Uh, so you can see if you're uh, overwriting the first values again where, uh, with the stack rotating on top of itself sort of thing. Uh, so that can be handy for that. I've not really used that much, not had to use that. Um, and then the next window, I'll go, go into breadboard. So this shows you the current uh, status of your GPIO pins, whether they're inputs or outputs. Uh, and currently they're all uh, 
in, uh, they're all the inputs according to this. But if I click on, double click on the green arrow that points inwards on the GPO one pin, you can actually change that to a a red. Oh, it's, it's updated that. Oh, it's probably because I opened the window whilst uh, and and it came up with its um, initial values, but now it's actually representing what's actually in the um, in the, my controller. So there's a few bugs in this, but. Uh, so if but double click on that, I can change it red to green, and red is uh, zero and green is one, I think. Um, so you can change the values on GPO pin, see see how things look, uh, and then I look at I step I'll open up the last window, which I'm going to go through, and this is like a scope. So if you click just above the line where you want to enter a value, um, a, something to monitor, if you type in GPO zero, you can monitor line GPO zero. Uh, and also enter GPIO2 for, for this example. Uh, then when I click on the run button, it will plot what's happening on those pins. And if I click on stop, uh, this was helpful for debugging the UART uh, code which I was writing uh, and solved all my problems. Uh, but it's very basic and it just keeps compressing the area. And you can't, you don't seem to be able to uh, pan this or be able to clear it. Uh, but it's, it's handy for uh, if you really need uh, something to debug what's happening on the GPIO pins.